I've got a fun question for you today. Would you trust your high profile, gotta have it right, real time live event to be mixed completely in software on a computer? There's probably a lot of bells and whistles, alarms going off in your brain right now, some elephants in the room that we would need to address. And that's exactly what we're gonna do today. I think there is a really cool future for software-based mixing. We've seen precedents in video world with vMix and Light and Grand MA. So a lot is being hosted on a computer and getting world-class events done, but it feels like audio is this, this last and final frontier. To be clear, I think there really is a long-term future for hardware-based solutions. So this is not a replacement, but a both and conversation. But the specific software-based solution I wanna introduce you today is made by Lean and Mean Audio, otherwise known as Llama, and they're based in the Netherlands. They've got an entire suite of audio products and are really making waves in the industry. I'm excited to partner with them today and share with you Llama Mix, their software-based mixer solution. I promise we're gonna to get to those elephants in depth, but first I'm gonna share with you three core strengths of this software mixing approach. And the first is flexibility. With Llama Mix, you can host your favorite VSTs that you're already using in post-production. No longer are you limited to have to use what's built into a console, but any piece of software off the shelf that you can buy or license and use within the desk. You can easily build your mix offline now. So if it's all within a computer, you don't have to have the console in front of you or even hook up a DSP server if you're on another software solution. It's all just right there in your computer. And since it's software based, it's hardware agnostic as far as control and IO. So as long as the device has an ASIO driver or can be connected over NDI, it is good to go. So that could be a normal studio interface. It could be Dante virtual sound card, a Dante PCIe card. You just pick how you wanna get audio in and you can mix it how you want. And like I mentioned, they have a suite of products, one of them being Llama Connect, and it is a software-based format converter. So maybe you got something coming in ASIO over Dante, but you need to send it over a different machine on your network via NDI. You can easily convert it with the nodes that are built in, pipe it over, and no external expensive converters you need to get. You can even run audio in between applications on the same machine. So this really unlocks a lot of capabilities and keep things uh, really nice and lean by having it all on one machine, or just gives you a lot more flexibility with routing. Um, Llama Connect, again, I think a huge feature for this software. And right now they're working on a Ravenna and AS67 implementation. There's a feature for 2110-30 and SRT. So definitely keep an eye on the updates for that. The second key strength is scalability. You only have to pay for the channel count and performance out of a computer that you need. So they have different pricing options. So mix 16, 32, 64, 128, and broadcast. So just depending on how many input channels and buses you need, you can pay for that accordingly. So if you're just making a small breakout rig and that's all over it's going to be, it's not a whole lot. If you need something to be able to put something on the moon, then great, you can upgrade to there. And that also means it's scalable, you can size up your control surface for the gig. So if you do a lot of fly dates with a specific, specific artist, you can stay, again, lean and mean and pack only what you need. So you can have a variety of control surfaces or even touch screens or whatever you need to, to fit together in a distributed model to suit the gig wherever you're at. This also means you have interchangeable parts. So if you have a, a regular desk that you're flying with and the faders go out, you might have to send it off for repair. There goes your entire desk. But if you have a controller that's attached to a computer and then IO, that breaks, you can order another one and not lose your entire rig. And lastly, with scalability, uh, Llama Mix can also run in the cloud. So you can use NDI to send signals in and out of it and run it again on premise or in the cloud, very flexible. And the Llama team has done tests where they've had a cloud instance running on a server in a different country, sent signal to it and back with a round trip latency of 20 milliseconds. So definitely low enough if you're working in a remote broadcast environment. The last core strength in my mind is efficiency. So I've been working with the team and they've shared with me some updates, one of them being their speech mixer, similar to an auto mixer. And I had a specific feature that I wanted. I shared it with the team. I got an email the very next week saying, hey, download the latest version, it is there. So it is a very fast, iterative approach that can really only be done in a software-based environment since you're not attached to supply chain and chipsets and stuff that's built into a desk. So being software native, they can move very quickly, keep overhead low, which gives you ultimately more bang for your buck since they can keep things economical. So if this sounds interesting to you, I've got a link below where you can download a free trial. It is full functionality for Llama Mix, but you'll just get 10 seconds of muted audio every 10 minutes. 
You can also give Llama Connect a try with full functionality up to eight inputs. If you go above that, you'll get the same 10 seconds of muted audio every 10 minutes. Right now it is Windows only, but there is Linux and Map on the roadmap, hopefully for this year. Now that I've shown you some of the core strengths of a software-based approach, I now want to be really honest and unpack some of those elephants. So there are three of them in my mind, three buckets, and the first is stability. Can I trust my show to a computer and a piece of software versus a dedicated hardware unit? Second is latency. Can I get a computer to get low enough round trip latency for my use case? And the third is control. Can I get to what I want when I want it? and do it quickly, all right? Um, so those were some of the three main concerns that came to my mind as I started getting uh, my feet wet and working with this product. And again, the point of this video isn't trying to persuade you that this is some magical panacea that's gonna solve all, the, all your audio problems, but I wanna stare these challenges in the face and see and evaluate if this technology is really good for this purpose. Because I think there really is a, a place, an eternal future for a hardware-based approach. If you need something that out the box, meets the spec, uh, is already there and trusted, maybe writer-friendly, totally great use that so uh what i appreciated about the llama team in general is that they're th really thinking of this as a both and where they're introducing another tool in your tool belt that i think is really going to excel in specific use cases and continue to expand its reach and way it's going to help you in your career again they want to make things simpler faster and more efficient it's something i value in live events all right let's jump in and address these one by one starting with stability at the end of the day, we want our tools to simply work. They want to make our lives easier, accomplish the task at hand, and ultimately not crash. We don't want our, our shows ruined for our clients, and we don't want uh, us to be constantly worrying about us uh, getting a bad look because our equipment didn't work right. So you might think uh, the place to not experiment with something that's nascent and unreliable is a show that's on a global scale where millions of people are watching, and it only comes every few years, maybe something like the Olympics. Now, I'm excited to share with you that Llama has done just that. So they partnered with Eurosport, Warner Brothers, and Discovery to use their AutoMix and AutoSync solution to do 15,000 commentary sessions, which is just blows my mind. So if you're watching uh, football or soccer for us Americans, and uh, there's commentators, and the, the main ones were, were, were commentating in English, but there's all these other languages that have commentators commentating the same thing, and they need to get mix is sent to all other parts of the world to these different markets. So doing that in a hardware solution where there's individual mix engineers and consoles and routing would just be insane. So what AutoMix is able to do is to run different instances of it, run these commentator mics into it, balance them against the, na uh, the, the international sound that's on site, and then bring them back to whatever end distribution place where it needs to go. So again, 15,000 commentary sessions, 24,000 hours of commentary. And that's also just the 19 days of the event. They had their machines running and up for months before that, making sure that they were stable. So I think the stability piece, they, they know how to do it and do it well. So if you heard good audio from the Olympics, specifically in other languages besides the main broadcast that were going on, you heard it being passed through their product. And so I think that's an incredible thing that they have accomplished and really speaks to their integrity and their stability in their code base. So if they're going to do it with Lama, AutoMix and AutoSync, they definitely are going to do that with Llama Mix as well. Um, so I, I really think that stability, uh, we may think about computers themselves just not being all that um, reliable, but there are things that you can actively do for your own rigs to make sure that the performance uh, is doing well. So I want to get a little bit practical here that you can tweak these in your PC. PC. And one thing is to do is make sure you have plenty of boot drive, uh, disk space, and also memory for what you're asking it to do. The second is avoiding USB hubs and uh, for your audio devices. Again, you want to think like a unitasker is kind of the, uh, the, the, the overarching mindset. Uh, you want to reduce your background app usage and any bloatware that's on the machine. And you also want to look at your pro power and processing management. So this is both looking at making sure your computer is not under-spec'd given the buffer size and processing load that you're asking of it. 
Um, in general, you want to go for higher clock speeds versus having more cores. So if you're building out a machine, go for something that has that, and it's going to excel at unitasking versus distributing the load and doing it around if you want things to be really low latency and real time. Number five is you want to make sure and test your VST plugins. Um, I'm all for being able to have access to all these different tools, and it's, sometimes it's easy to get carried away and maybe do a trial of something that you really don't know is going to work or not. Uh, so use the same amount of rigor you would in testing your equipment for a live show that's hardware, also for the software that you choose to run inside of Llama Mix. And lastly, uh, when you're on a Windows machine, you can pause Windows updates. You can tell them to wait, or you can even just pull it off the internet entirely during the show uh, just to make sure that does not get in your way. I'm even thinking about ordering a PC Optimize for this, either from PC Audio Labs um, or maybe a Rockbox or something like that, um, just so I can have something that is rock solid and ready to go. But I, I Right now, I just have my laptop, a ThinkPad, and it's running it just fine, no problems. Now let's move on to latency. So there are four main causes of latency in audio. The first is sound propagation. You know, it takes time for audio to travel through the air, 1130 feet per second, 345 meters per second. The second is processing time. That's determined by the buffer size and sample rate, and ultimately the, the, the driver that's connected to your computer. The third is plugin processing time. So if you insert a plugin, uh, maybe a limiter that might have oversampling, you're gonna to incur some latency there. So that can introduce some and also comes in your A to D and D to A conversion. So when an analog signal is being converted to digital and back, uh, there is some inherent latency with that process. So all that being said, we want to be able to run our machines at a, as, as lowest latency as possible, which means running at a low buffer size and even upping the sample rate can actually get that even lower, but that's the cost of higher processing. So this is kind of the Rubik's cube we have to solve. So it also pays dividends to really use a trusted product that does have a rock solid uh, USB driver. So RME has been in the industry a long time and is really known for their stable drivers. So that's another purchase I'm thinking about making is having something that can really supplement that. The, the latency issue ultimately comes down to your use case. So the most broad would maybe be lip sync for broadcast. Audio is almost always ahead of video, so this isn't a big deal. So just be careful with the plugins that you're using. But the latency inherent in sending a signal into a machine and back out at a reasonable buffer size, you're really not gonna run into any issues with lip sync. It's only gonna be a fraction of a frame or so. The the really, the, again, this kind of sub elephant in the room is in-ear monitoring for musicians. That's where it really matters to be able to have when you play a note for it to go quickly from the feel in your hands of interacting with that instrument to your in-ears. So again, ultimately, if it's a... Uh really big issue if you're having too much that's running through your desk, depending on the processing you want to use. You can also use a separate monitor desk that sits in front of your Llama Mix instance. So again, this is really kind of partnering and seeing what is the best solution for having whatever tool you want to put together your mix versus the very specific use case of, hey, I need to mix monitors. Having stuff really, really low is important. Maybe a hardware solution might be better, but I've experimented with using it and I even playing myself, I'm able to get very, very low buffer sizes, uh, run a moderate um, session of plugins and still keep monitoring uh, very low and, and, and it doesn't feel like I'm incurring much latency overall. So just feel free to experiment, see what type of processing you want to use depending on the hardware you have and see how low you can get the latency and things be stable. Our last stop here is control. So this is the most amount of DIYing you'll have to do. And also uh, that might be a chore to some people, but also may be freeing to others. And like, finally, I can stitch together whatever set of pieces to control my desk as I want. So the obvious being, you know, faders. And so Llama Mix supports the, the Mackie protocol. So you can get any Mackie uh, control device, hook it up over USB into your machine or over network and away you go. So you can map things. You can have different layers. Uh, that's quite easy. Uh, I've been able to use actually a DLive control surface in here and map the MIDI channels out and it's working great. Uh, you can also use a uh, iPad or other 
way to host the software of Touch OSC. I've even used a Mackie uh, template from that to control the desk. Uh, you can use any old MIDI controller to do that. So there's MIDI Learn. So you could use a little keyboard with some sliders. And you, lastly, you could also use a touch screen. So again, those, those four ways uh, of using Mackie via a hardware controller, uh, a software-based solution that is separate from the actual computer hosting it. So maybe Touch OSC. You could use a dedicated MIDI controller with MIDI Learn or a touchscreen. Um, so with Lima Mix, they also have what are called presets. They are analogous to scenes in other consoles. So if you have a show that's uh, that's theater based, that has a lot of them that you're rolling through, or you have an artist uh, that you're, you have a lot of dates on a tour and you have a lot of moving pieces about what type of effects you're using, or maybe fader moves are setting up for a specific song, you can easily program that in. And lastly, I'd say uh, the production industry has also v really welcomed the, the Stream Deck. So I can see some cool use cases for building some even some macros on the Stream Deck to be able to control, send MIDI. Uh, so I'm, that's uh, some videos you'll, you'll see from me in the future is me experimenting around using my own little Stream Deck here uh, to do some really cool things with Llama Mix. At the end of the day, yes, it's new to think about your console separate from the controller, but this is just time to experiment to see what fits your workflow and the type of shows that you're doing. So definitely give it a go. All right, that was a lot of fun getting to unpack the three core strengths of a software mixing approach with Llama Mix and some of the three elephants that we need to continue to evaluate and run through. And so that is stability, latency, and control. Again, I'm, I'm really excited to start using this product more and more out in the wild to see where it shines. Uh, but if you want to, to give it a go, at the link below is a download a free trial link, so make sure and check it out. More videos are coming on Llama Connect and some other uh, deeper dives into the software itself and how to set it up. I'm Michael Curtis, excited to partner with Lean and Mean Audio today. Catch you next time.